Welcome back to the channel. The MiG-21 isn't just another jet, it's a legend. First flown in the 1950s, it became the most produced supersonic fighter in history, serving in over 60 air forces around the world. But this icon is not easy to master. The MiG-21 is unforgiving, demanding precision and discipline from every pilot. That's why in part two of our instrument flying training series, we'll push deeper, learning the techniques that separate casual flyers from professional pilots. Strap in, because this is where you take your MiG-21 flying to the next level. This is the second part of our MiG-21 instrument flying tutorial. If you haven't seen the first episode, I recommend watching it first to build a solid foundation on the basics before continuing here. For today's sortie, we're flying in heavily overcast weather. Perfect conditions to highlight just how important instrument flying really is. Here's the quick mission brief. We'll depart to Sector Alpha, climbing to 5,000 meters on a north heading while holding 600 kilometers per hour. I'll level off first. Then, at the outer edge of the sector, we'll execute a 60 degree banking turn to reverse heading. After that, we'll practice a 30 VVI descent and climb, followed by unusual attitude recovery, before rejoining and returning for landing. That's the plan. Now let's jump into the cockpit and get started. We are still climbing, so let's do a quick recap of the key instruments you need to focus on. This is the artificial horizon. It shows the aircraft's position relative to the ground and works with a gyroscope. Here's the airspeed indicator. Right now, we're holding 600 kilometers per hour. This is the altimeter. Our current altitude is displayed here. Next is the vertical speed indicator, or VSI, which tells us whether we're climbing or descending. And finally, the HIS. It shows our current heading and direction to the runway. With it, you can also check the distance to the airfield. We're now approaching 4,800 meters. So I'm preparing to level off at 5,000. Lower the pitch gently to about two to three degrees, reduce power, and hold speed and heading. Level off at 5,000 meters. Speed, 600. VSI, zero. Here's a tip from my experience. During an instrument flying sortie, don't split your focus between looking outside and inside. Keep your eyes only on the instruments. In this jet, unlike modern aircraft, you have no advanced aids. You cannot afford to take your focus away. Now, at the edge of the sector, we'll carry out a 60 degree banking turn to reverse heading. I'll start the turn when the RSBN distance indicator reaches 50 kilometers. That's the outer edge of sector alpha. Approaching 50 now, initiating the turn. Thank, balance, back pressure. Check attitude, thank. Altimeter, height decreased by 70 meters. VSI showing a descent. Correct with less bank, regain attitude. Parameters looking good, stand by to roll out. Rolling out, now. We initially lost some height. Drop a comment if you know why. Before the next maneuver, let's check engine parameters. No warning lights in the cockpit. Oil pressure and temperature within limits. AHS fast slave. Fuel checked. Next maneuver, a 30 VSI descent and climb. We'll start on heading 180. Enter a descent at 30 meters per second, speed 600. Approaching 3000 meters and north heading, we'll reverse the turn and roll out on heading 180, back at 5000 meters.
Entering the maneuver. Lowering attitude, reducing power. Keep it smooth. Bank 45 left, VSI 30 down, speed 600. Check attitude, bank, VSI, speed, altimeter, heading. In the real aircraft, power is set around 75%. But here in DCS, I'll adjust more to maintain speed. Keep scanning instruments throughout. Approaching 3,200 meters, apply power, reverse the turn. In real life, 93% is enough, but here I'll use more. Keep scanning. Check attitude, bank, VSI, speed, 600. Don't accept small deviations, fight for the exact numbers. That's how my instructor trained me, and I'll always respect him for it. Rolling out, now. now. Let's see the maneuver from outside. Notice how important instrument flying is here. You're deep inside clouds with zero outside references, yet still maneuvering confidently. Without instruments, you'd be disoriented immediately. Your body might tell you your level when you're actually banking, climbing, or descending. Trusting those feelings leads to disorientation, stalls, or even crashing into the ground. That's why instrument flying is critical in this jet. We don't have weather radar, so bad weather can surprise us any time. You must be prepared to handle it and come out safe. During training, our instructors always told us, don't go inside clouds until you have enough instrument flying experience. If you do, without the skills, you'll quickly get into serious trouble. Now I will show you a great exercise that we practice, called unusual attitude recovery. 
As I mentioned in my previous instrument flying video, we always train these maneuvers in a dedicated trainer aircraft. Here's how it works. The pilot in command hands over the controls to the other pilot, and then he must close his eyes. The second pilot then maneuvers the aircraft in all axes, pitch, roll, and yaw. Suddenly, he hands back control to the first pilot, who now has to take prompt actions to bring the aircraft from that abnormal situation back to normal flight. The front pilot hands over controls to the rear occupant and closes his eyes. The rear pilot maneuvers the aircraft aggressively in all directions. Now, he hands back the controls. Watch carefully as the front cockpit pilot recovers the aircraft from this unusual attitude. Let's go through the recovery from a dive step by step. First, check the position of the miniature aircraft on the artificial horizon. It is on the black portion. Confirm by scanning the other instruments. The airspeed is increasing, and the altimeter is reducing. It's confirmed that we are in a dive. The first action is to get the throttle to idle. Check speed. If the speed is above 900 km per hour, extend speed brakes. Roll wings level and pull to the horizon. Apply power on horizon. That is how you recover from a dive. Now let me show you the outside view of the maneuver we just performed. Notice how easy it is to get disoriented. That is why you must always trust your instruments. If you've ever encountered a similar disorienting situation, don't forget to share your experience. It will be valuable for our community. Now let's rejoin. I want to show you a situation where disorientation can happen very easily. We've completed today's exercise and are heading back. Kutasi, in field one. Request navigation assistance. Notice here, I was maintaining my heading but then I started drifting off course. Look at this needle. It shows the direction to the runway. I wanted to turn toward that heading, but I was focused outside. Instead of turning correctly, I ended up rolling the aircraft. Since the heading was still changing, I thought I was doing it right and kept rolling. Only when I refocused on the instruments did I realize I was in an unusual attitude. Fortunately, I had enough altitude and caught the error within seconds. But think about it. If the cloud base was lower, this mistake could have turned me into a fireball. Some might say, we don't get into these situations just by looking outside. But after flying fully on instruments for 30 to 40 minutes, when you suddenly transition back, it's easy to get disoriented, especially in the early stages of training. Maybe very experienced pilots don't face it often, but from my own experience, it can happen. And here's the important part. In situations like this, you don't have much time to think. You must react immediately. That's why we practice unusual attitude recovery over and over again. So it becomes muscle memory. At any point in your flying career, this can save you. Now let's continue the rejoin. You can see the runway at my one o'clock. I'll directly join the downwind for landing. I'm using speed brakes to increase the descent rate while controlling speed. I must line up with the correct displacement and height. On downwind, the standard height is 1,000 meters, and the speed should be below 550 kilometers per hour. Gear is extended below this speed. Always stick to procedures. Never ignore them. Check the arm light. It's on. I'll explain more about that in a later video. Now approaching 45 degrees to the runway. 
Time to start the base turn. Always maintain the correct speed. Never let it drop below 450 kilometers per hour at this stage. If it does, it takes 10 to 12 seconds to recover power. So always think ahead of the aircraft. Anticipate your next move. Another tip, don't reduce power below 60% on approach. At that point, the exhaust nozzle diameter increases and you'll lose thrust suddenly. Keep that in mind. The landing was good. For those who want to see it from outside, here's the view. If you noticed anything wrong in the instrument flying procedures I demonstrated, please leave a comment. I really value your feedback and I make sure to reply to everyone. And before I finish, let me share why I started this channel. Since childhood, I've always dreamed of being a fighter pilot. Listening to pilot stories inspired me to chase that path. Becoming a fighter pilot isn't something everyone gets the chance to do, but through this channel, my goal is to share insights with those who dream of flying jets, with student pilots in training, and even with simulator players who want to experience what it's really like. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions or requests, drop them in the comments. Safe flight and happy landings.